Hey guys, welcome back. Let's get started. Um, last week was not my best week. I kind of forgot my own plan and I let bias get to me. But after a good weekend rest and some reevaluation, I've come up with possible scenarios for this week. And let's see what they are. Right, so last week after the Fed meeting, right, you can see that we kept selling off in a constricted pattern, some kind of falling wedge pattern. We broke that Thursday, we hit resistance, right? in Friday and we came back most of the gains, though we made a higher low. So with that being said, I'm looking at a couple of chart patterns going into next week, right? You can see that as the market kept falling, right? You can see we finally popped into bullish divergence when we broke this wedge. So this falling wedge breakout plus the bullish divergence, you know, makes me lean towards this pattern where the breakout on Thursday, right? Uh, into Friday was your A wave. We came down lower for this B wave. We moved higher. We move higher, right? Early next week in the C wave, where you know we finish your A wave, come down for the B wave, and then finish the C wave in a bigger ABC, right? That's kind of the pattern I am watching right now in your bigger ABC chart, right? Where after this C wave comes down, I'm looking for a bigger, right? A bigger wave into 4,500 ish to finish off this B wave before a leg down into the C wave. With that being said, I am looking at a few other versions, right? So initially, I showed you this ABC pattern, right, which comes down. I'm also, you know, of the opinion that if we do, you know, if we do get rejected back at 4020, again, I'm looking for one more leg to the downside. And in that, right, this is kind of how I would label that. All right, let me go to the lower time frame, right, on the 30-minute chart, this entire move. Hold on, I think you can see it on the 15 minute. Yeah, so this entire move down was my wave one, this is my wave two, right? This was my, again, this is my wave three. We, again, like I said, if we reject 4020 hard, my wave four, and we come down lower for the wave five, so it's kind of what I'm watching, right? If we do reject that one, two, three, four, five, this fifth leg down would be the ending fifth wave in an ABC, and I would kind of consider I would kind of consider this entire move down, right, to have finished this ABC and we start this giant C leg to the upside, right? Again, it's not going to go straight up as the chart looks. Again, it's going to do a one, two, three, four, five, something like this, right? But I will be watching to see if we do start, if we do have a leg down, right, and the support at 3750, I will be looking to see if we start the C leg higher into, you know, 4,500, 4,500 and a bigger ABC. So that's kind of the other chat pattern I am watching. I'm watching to see if this entire C leg, I mean, B leg down likely ends next week and we, you know, into midterms go higher for that C leg. So they are kind of the potential patterns I'm watching, right? I'm again in an ABC, I'm looking to see if we have a B wave higher, right? Fill some gap, have another leg before we go up higher for that C wave. And the other one I'm looking to see if we reject 4020, we come down to finish the B leg before we have a C leg higher. So those are kind of the multiple scenarios that I'm kind of going through. And let's look at some of you know the supporting factors, like the dollar, for example, right? We saw that you know the dollar did make a new all-time high. And if I go to the weekly chart of the dollar, right, we know that it has, right, bigger picture, it was in this massive falling wedge pattern. Back in 2015, it broke out, we consolidated, and now it's moving higher, right? So this technically, right, can keep continuing to move higher. But we also know that right now, like if I drew some channels, right, this is your bottom support, this is your top layer of support, and again, this purple line is another channel, right? And a lot of the times, you know, you can see stocks struggle over the channel till it bases a little bit before it pushes higher. So I kind of have dollar and a wave three ending here you can see we have a shooting star candle right so i'm looking to see if we come down for this wave four which could be supportive of the abc pattern i had back in the chart right so this is kind of what i'm watching for dollar to see if dollar supports or more bullish equity right let's look at the eels eels again you know on the weekly chart eels are pretty bullish right we know that this was the channel holding a support so far it's moved higher and it has moved into support right so if yields come down a little bit to retest the trend line that could again lend to a bullish equities and could help support you know the stocks for a move higher so yields they do look bullish right but it is on resistance so if it does reject here you know growth could pop a little bit 
based off of, you know, we use, let's look at, you know, Bitcoin. The reason I big up Bitcoin is I wanted to point out where it was, you know, kind of in the market. You can see this is the weekly chart of Bitcoin and you can see this level here is weekly support. And you can see that we, you know, bounce off this level and we pretty much, right, come down right into that level, right? We, by that level, I mean that we did, you know, we are hovering right below it. So it's kind of at a crucial point, right? Bitcoin is either going to propel off this level, you know, higher, right? Or it's going to, if this break down, right, this is the level you can see. If I go to the lower time frame on four hour chart, you can see this is the level used to support, right? So below 19.5, right, Bitcoin gets very bearish, where, again, we know this is the line, right? This blue line pretty much is the line holding as support. If you move back all the way far, further off and you can see kind of just hovering in that region. So tomorrow morning, I'd say 2400 is kind of the level to watch on Bitcoin. If we start to break 2400, then we should be able to run up to 22,000. So I am looking at, you know, Bitcoin to move higher. It's kind of something I am watching with Ethereum 2.0 coming up. I'm also watching to see if Ethereum, right, it's either going to do an ABC or Ethereum is going to go try to test the top of this channel at you know 2000 2100 so i am looking to see if miners pop off of you know bullish crypto so that is something i'm keeping an eye on as well right and the correlation correlation between bitcoin and equities has been you know closer to one right so if a bitcoin chart looks bullish that could mean that you know stocks move either higher for the b wave right or the bigger c wave so that is something i'm watching as well with that being said right i want to go over this week's watch list I have, you know, made it even between calls and puts, right? The first one I do have is Mara because I told you guys that I am watching to see if Bitcoin pops higher, right? And I think Mara would be a great candidate. You can see we're just kind of basing sideways. It made a low on 29th of August and that low has held, right? Through this entire mar market, you know, sell-off or whatever. You can see we're kind of going sideways. So that does look pretty bullish. That's why I have Mara calls over you know, 12 bucks, if we break 12 bucks, then I think we should be able to hold, hold, hold you know, run up to 14.2, which is like a 20% move. So that's the reason I have Mara on here. If crypto's to pop, I think Mara would make a great candidate for a push to the upside. So the next one I have is FSLR. The reason for that is kind of interesting, right? Because on the monthly chart of FSLR, you can see this is a line, use the support, and this is a line, use this resistance. And you can see we pretty much, right, every time we hit the top of that, we have sold off so again fslr is at a pretty interesting level right we last week we popped right into resistance so if this line like holds like it did in the past it could lead to a pretty nice sell-off so that's the reason i have fslr puts on this week's watch list right and again wait for this right wait for this to break 123 like you can see this is kind of in a rising wedge right so it could you know just hold a little tighter in this wedge before it breaks down so it is like you can either wait for it to break 123 or you can wait for it to chop a little bit more, right? As long as the support holds, it can still try to make a new high, right? And when it makes a new high, you can kind of buy puts on it. But yeah, the better option would be for wait for it to, you know, break this rising wedge channel and then it, it could have a nice fall to the downside against monthly resistance. So that's the reason I have FSLR puts on this week's watch list. Again, another stock that's weak because, you know, Europe is kind of, kind of sorting out its gas issues, but not really. But you can see this, this is the uptrend for natural gas, right? You can see that we've broken the uptrend. This is the line of resistance. So I think as long as it holds below, right? I think gas, natural gas could sell off down to 26. So that's the reason I have natural gas puts on here is I could see a case for it to come retest 26, right? At minimum before it either moves up or down. And I think some bit of relief is coming into the, electricity and gas for Europe. So the next one I have is mRNA. And again, the weekly, you can see we had a pretty strong week. Not a pretty strong week. I mean, it had kind of a doji sort of like a reversal candle at the bottom for mRNA, right? You can see that it had a nice move on September 1st. We've just kind of gone sideways, right? So I think if we open above 140, 141, it could have a nice run up right into 151. 155. So that's the reason I have mRNA on here. Like, I, it's either going to do, right? It's either going to pop for this B wave before it comes down, or it's going to start the C wave. So either way, I think mRNA could present opportunities 
next week. And the next one I have is Amazon. So this would kind of be pretty standard for most of the bank stocks. And I chose Amazon because, again, we know this earnings gap, right? We came down, we filled this earnings gap, and now we pop, right? So as long as it holds this level at 126.52, right? I think Amazon could go up to retest 133 to 135. So that's the reason I have Amazon called on here, right? If the market index does follow through, I think Amazon could be a nice play. And the next one I have is Alta. So I have covered Alta, right? We had calls before earnings that played out. And again, you can see we are again on resistance, right? We are on a weekly level of resistance. You can see we've kind of just been chopping sideways. The better entry again would be a break of 375, but on a 30 minute chart, Alta does you know, look choppy, it does look weak. As long as it stays below 430, I think it could start heading down. But again, it is a low volume choppy stock, right? So trade this with caution, but Alta does, you know, present a lot of cases for it to, you know, continue selling off lower. And it does have an inside week, right? So it could make a big move next week, up or down, right? Up upside if it can get over and stay over 126, it can get a 448, right? And if it follows through to the downside, it could come down to 380. So that's the reason I have Alta on this week's watch list. And yeah, thank you so much and have a great week.